Einstein's equation became closely associated with the power and danger of nuclear weapons. The equation E equals mc square found its way into the public eye, featuring prominently in the official 1945 release on the development of the atomic bomb, known as the Smith Report. By 1946, the equation became closely linked with Einstein's work with Times magazine's cover prominently featuring a picture of Einstein next to an image of mushroom cloud with the equation. A scientist never experienced this, he only mathematically deduced it. When Einstein said E is equal to mc squared, that is not his living experience, that is his mathematical deduction. A religious person never experienced it, he just believes it because somebody that he believes in said so. So you must decide first of all, are you looking for solace or are you looking for a solution? If you're looking for solace, you just came to the wrong place because I'm not a solace to anybody. I'm here to disturb the shit out of you. question is not related to yoga. Can I ask this right now? Okay. What was the reason of creation of this universe? Why are you asking me? I didn't do it <laughs> Now, <laughs> now you first said it's not related to yoga. There's nothing which is not related to yoga because Yoga means union. Yoga does not mean twisting your body, standing on your head, holding your breath or some other nonsense. Yoga means union. Union means all-inclusiveness. Everything has become one in your experience. Now this is not our idea because that is the way existence is, that it is all-inclusive. There is nothing here which you can separate from the other. Today modern science is proving it to you beyond any doubt that the whole existence is just one energy, yes? The religions of the world have been screaming for a long time that God is everywhere. Whether you say God is everywhere or you say everything is one energy, are you talking about different realities or the same reality? God is everywhere, everything is one energy. Are we talking about the same thing? Yes. A scientist never experienced this, he only mathematically deduced it. When Einstein said E is equal to mc squared, that is not his living experience, that is his mathematical deduction. A religious person never experienced it, he just believes it because somebody that he believes in said so. Now yoga means you are a hard case. You are not willing to settle for deductions or belief systems, you want to know it. So if you sit here, if you can experience the whole existence as yourself, then you are in yoga. So there is no question not related to yoga, okay? It is very related. Now what you are asking is, why creation? Isn't it? When it comes to creation, you never ask why, you ask how. Because if you ask why creation, I can tell you one day, you know, God had nothing to do. He was playing marbles. One marble fell this way and became planet Earth. Another flew up and became sun. Shall I continue? <laughs> this is a ridiculous story, you don't like it. But I can tell you a nice elaborate story which you would like to believe. Take little more time, that's all. If I tell you a more elaborate story, you will believe, isn't it? If you believe, you have an interesting story going, a positive story. If you disbelieve my story, you have a negative story going. But both ways you are not any closer to reality than you are right now, isn't it? Yes or no? Yes. If you believe my story, does it get it close to you? If you disbelieve my story, does it get it close to you? No. You will just have stories. Maybe what I am telling you is a true story. 
Even if it is a true story, still it doesn't get you access to reality, isn't it? Maybe I am telling you a true story, but even if it's a true story, in your experience it is just a story, isn't it? Stories will entertain you, stories will solace you, stories will not liberate you, you must know this. So you must decide first of all, are you looking for solace or are you looking for a solution? If you're looking for solace, you just came to the wrong place because I am not a solace to anybody. I am here to disturb the shit out of you. If you are not asked questions, I will raise those questions for you. This is not a place to say everything will be okay, everything will be okay, don't worry, everything will be all right. They've been saying this to you for a long time. That will help you to sleep well tonight. I am not interested whether you sleep well or not. I am interested that you come awake tomorrow morning. What's your interest? So people have been focusing on how to put you to sleep. So they told you stories. I won't tell you a story because if you ask why, I can only tell you a story, isn't it? Right now this question has come. If you are feeling right now ecstatic, would you ask why creation? You would be glad you created, isn't it? Right now, the experience of life has become burdensome somehow. That is when you ask, why all this creation? So first, let's change the experience of life, then the right questions will come. Right now the question itself is coming from a wrong perspective because you are not asking this question with the right sense of depth in it. Very easily you are articulating this question. You are asking, what is the basis of my existence? You are asking what is the nature of my existence, but you are asking it too casually because you still do not know the pain of ignorance. You are still enjoying your ignorance. You still believe ignorance is bliss. You are not being torn apart by the pain of ignorance. If such a thing was happening, then I would answer this in a different way. If you could not ask the question, if tears came to you, if you just thought about the question, then I will answer it in a completely different way, which is not verbal. But now you are so clearly articulating the question, you do not know the depth of the question that you are asking yet. In the realm of physics, energy is defined as a capacity to perform work. This capacity can manifest in various forms, including potential, kinetic, thermal, electrical, chemical, nuclear and others. Energy is also involved in processes such as heat transfer and work, where it undergoes transformations and is identified based on its nature. For instance, transferred heat can become thermal energy and work done can take the form of mechanical energy. Motion is inherently connected to all forms of energy. For instance, when a body is in motion, it possesses kinetic energy. Even when an object is at rest, it can still harbor the potential for motion and therefore potential energy. This potential is evident in devices like a tension bow or a spring. Nuclear energy is another example of potential energy arising from the arrangement of subatomic particles within an atom's nucleus. In summary, energy is in various forms, is intricately linked to motion and the potential for action in the physical world. The principle that energy cannot be created nor destroyed, only transformed from one form to another, the first law of thermodynamics. An illustration of this principle is when a box moves down a hill. The potential energy it had due to its elevated position converts into kinetic energy as it descends. When a box comes to a stop due to friction, the kinetic energy transforms into thermal energy, generating heat in both the box and the slope. Energy transformation occurs in various ways, leading to usable mechanical or electrical energy. Devices such as fuel burning heat engines, generators, batteries, fuel cells and magneto-hydrodynamic system play a role in producing these forms of energy. E equals mc square is a fundamental expression in the theory of special relativity developed by the German-born physicist Albert Einstein. 
This equation encapsulates the concept that mass and energy are interchangeable forms of the same physical entity and can be converted into each other. In the equation, the product of the increased relative mass of a body and the speed of light squared is equal to the kinetic energy of that body. This equation has profound implications of understanding the relationship between mass and energy and is one of the cornerstones of modern physics. This equation is a foundational concept in the theory of special relativity, revolutionizing the understanding of the relationship between mass and energy. Before special relativity, mass and energy were considered distinct entities. However, Einstein's theory introduced the notion that the energy of a body at rest is precisely where m is the rest mass of the body. This equation signifies that each body with a rest mass m possesses an inherent rest energy of mc square, which has the potential for conversion into other forms of energy. The mass energy equivalence principle implies that if energy is released during such a conversion, the rest mass of the body will decrease. This phenomenon occurs not only in chemical reactions but also in substantial transformations, particularly in nuclear reactions. In nuclear fusion reactions such as those taking place in stars like the sun, a portion of the original rest energy of hydrogen is converted to other forms of energy sustaining the star's luminosity. The equation is instrumental in understanding these energy transformations and plays a crucial role in various fields of physics, including nuclear and particle physics. In the context of special relativity, the equation E equals mc square defines the energy of a particle in its rest frame as a product of its mass and the speed of light squared. The large numerical value of the speed of light implies that even a small amount of rest mass corresponds to a substantial amount of energy. Rest mass, also known as invariant mass, is a fundamental property independent of momentum. Even at speeds approaching the speed of light, the equivalence principle suggests that when energy is lost in various transformations, an equivalent amount of mass is also lost and this energy can be released as radiant or thermal energy. The concept of mass energy equivalence emerged as a paradox in the 20th century and was initially described by Henry Poincare. Einstein later proposed it as a general principle in his Annus Mirabilis papers in 1905, marking a significant advancement in our understanding of the fundamental nature of mass and energy. After the discovery of radioactivity in 1897, scientists quickly realized that the total energy released in radioactive processes was approximately 1 million times greater than that involved in any known molecular change. This observation raised a crucial question, where does this extraordinary amount of energy originate? In response to this puzzling phenomenon, New Zealand physicist Ernest Rutherford and British radio chemist Frederick Soddy proposed a groundbreaking idea. They suggested the existence of an enormous amount of latent energy stored within matter itself. Rutherford further extended this concept by speculating in 1904 that this internal energy is not only present in radioactive substances but is also stored within normal matter. In his speculation, he foresaw the possibility of controlling the rate of disintegration of radio elements, envisioning that if such control were achieved, an enormous energy could be obtained from a small quantity of matter. This early insight by Rutherford laid the groundwork for the later understanding and utilization of nuclear energy. Einstein's famous equation E equals mc square does not serve as an explanation for the large energies released in radioactive decay, but it does provide a means to quantify these energies. The theoretical explanation for radioactive decay is rooted in the nuclear forces responsible for holding atoms together. However, these forces were still unknown in 1905 when Einstein proposed the equation. The substantial energy released from radioactive decay had already been measured by Ernest Rutherford and was more straightforward than the small change in the gross mass of materials resulting from the decay. In theory, Einstein's equation could calculate these energies by measuring mass differences before and after reactions. 
However, in practice, the mass differences in 1905 were too minuscule to be measured in bulk. Before this realization, there was optimism about the possibility of using a calorimeter to measure radioactive decay energies, potentially allowing the measurement of changes in mass difference as a validation of Einstein's equation. In his 1905 paper, Einstein suggested that mass energy equivalence might be tested with radioactive decay, which was known to release enough energy to be potentially weighed when absent from the system. However, the progress in this direction faced challenges. Radioactivity appeared to proceed at its own unalterable pace and even with the advent of simple nuclear reactions using proton bombardment. The practical liberation of great amounts of usable energy in 1933, Rutherford reportedly expressed skepticism and efficiently exploiting this energy, stating, anyone who expects a source of power from the transformation of the atom is talking moonshine. Despite early optimism and theoretical possibilities, the controlled release of nuclear energy faced significant challenges before it could become a practical reality. The perspective on the practical application of Einstein's equation in harnessing nuclear energy shifted dramatically in 1932 with the discovery of the neutron and its mass. The discovery allowed scientists to calculate mass differences for single nuclide and their reactions directly, enabling a comparison with the sum of masses for the particles making up their composition. In 1933, the energy released from the reaction of lithium-7 plus protons resulting in two alpha particles provided an opportunity to test Einstein's equation with an error margin of 0.5%. Despite this progress, scientists did not initially perceive such reactions as a practical source of power. However, the landscape changed drastically after the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945 which demonstrated the enormous energies released from nuclear fission. Einstein's equation became closely associated with the power and danger of nuclear weapons. The equation E equals mc square found its way into the public eye, featuring prominently in the official 1945 release on the development of the atomic bomb, known as the Smith Report. By 1946, the equation became closely linked with Einstein's work with Times Magazine's cover prominently featuring a picture of Einstein's next to an image of mushroom cloud with the equation. Einstein's role in the development of the atomic bomb was relatively minor. In 1939, he co-signed a letter to President Roosevelt urging funding for atomic energy research, emphasizing the theoretical possibility of an atomic bomb. Roosevelt responded by allocating a significant portion of the wartime budget to atomic research. However, Einstein lacking a security clearance made only a modest scientific contribution, an analysis of an isotope separation method in theoretical terms. While E equals mc square is valuable for understanding the potential energy release in a fission reaction, it was not strictly necessary for developing the atomic bomb. Once the fission process was understood and its energy measured, the equation played a minimum role in the practical aspects of weapon development. The theory of fission, as noted by physicist Robert Serber, is considered non-relativistic, meaning the relativistic effects are too small to significantly affect the dynamics of the fission process. There are any number of views on the equation's importance to nuclear reactions. In 1938, Physicist Lee Smeitner and Otto Robert Frisch directly used Einstein's equation to comprehend the quantitative energetics of the fission process, realizing that the basic fission process was energetically possible. Their use of packing, fraction and nuclear binding energy values combined with E equals mc square contributed to their understanding of the energetic feasibility of atomic fission.